So I'm going to go into Dynamics 365. For those of you who are on AX 2012, you'll notice that Dynamics 365 is a web-based client. You no longer need to RDP into anywhere or open up a separate program. It is simply go open up your web browser, whichever one you like, go to a certain link, put in your username and login, and you're on the system. Note that Microsoft has released a new multi-factor authentication. So now when you log in, you either have to put in a code that gets texted to you. So those features are available now as well. And so that's something to be cognizant of. So what you see on my screen is the main page for Dynamics 365. What you see over here are called workspaces. Workspaces are amalgamations of links and KPIs and other areas that would be useful to you when you're doing a specific task. All these workspaces are configurable to each individual user. You'll notice that I have a number of them on my screen. This is because I'm a system administrator. Your security role will dictate which of these workspaces you have access to. And from there, you'll be able to do whatever it is that you do on your day-to-day -day basis. So let's get into some of the new features. Now we're gonna go on to my favorite feature, and that is migrating data into Dynamics from Excel. And for this, I'm gonna switch over to Internet Explorer, and you'll see why in just a second. So for those of you who are coming from AX 2012, you probably know that this is not something that's very easily done. In AX 2012, you had about three options. You could purchase an ISV, such as Atlas, which was an ISV that I did on every AX 2012 implementation to migrate data for journals. You could use the data import export framework, but that had a few issues because it didn't do validation and it didn't generate voucher numbers. And so you either had to remember last time I was on voucher 1337, so I know that I'm gonna start at 1338 now, or you would have to do a voucher generation at time of posting rather than at time of creation or you'd have to write a customization, which is somewhat expensive. So in Dynamics 365, all that changed. So let's go into the general ledger again, and let's go into just a regular general journal this time. So I'm going to create myself a new journal. And so what you see in any screen where you have a journal set you can go to this button up here and press open lines in Excel. And what you see is we have three different templates available to us. Our standard general journal load, our invoice journal, specifically customer or AR invoice journal loads, because there's no such thing as an AR invoice journal in Dynamics. And finally, a project expense journal load. These templates operate differently. You'll notice, for example, if we hop over to the AP module, and we go to our invoice journal, as terms of payment and method of payment. Is this a vendor I pay by check? Is this a vendor I pay by ACH? What are any cash discounts? If you were to use the general journal template, you would not get that information defaulted. So before you decide to use this tool, make sure you test and see that it's doing what you need it to do. So make sure you run a load, post it, try to pay the invoice, et cetera, et cetera. But you'll notice that you have different formats depending on which journal you're on. And if I were to flip over into AP Payment Journal, you would see we have this here as well. That's because all of these journals use what's known as an entity. An entity is a feature in Dynamics 365, which is basically a vehicle for interacting data between the system and anywhere else. So whether it's into an Excel template or whether it's into a data warehouse, you have to use a specific entity and different entities handle themselves a little differently. And so that's why you have these pre-built lists that are available to you. If you wanted to add another load template here, that would be development. You can't do that just by configuration, but it's not a very major development. So let's go back to our general journal and let's open this up in Excel. So I go here, I'm just gonna use my standard template, I hit okay, and then here I open. This is one of the reasons why I switched to IE. If you were using Chrome, for example, it forces you to do a download, which can get a little cumbersome. So in IE or Edge, this is a little bit easier. And now my other public service announcement I wanna make 
if you do want to use this feature, you either need to have Office 365 or some sort of similar license. This won't work just by default. Now, when I hit enable editing, it will take me straight into the tool. But the first time you do this, it's going to ask you to log in. And so you need to make sure that your Office license meets the requirement that Microsoft has in order to use this tool. So just something to be aware of. But as you can see, here we have our template. So you can see it automatically pulled in my header information, so my batch number and my description. And then we have this pane on the side. So the first thing I want to call out is that you can actually modify this template. For example, let's say you see currency comes before debit and credit. That makes no sense. So I'm going to hit this design button here, and it will allow me to modify this template. It will also allow me to add and remove fields. Journal loads are most common for two reasons, payroll entries. So if you have a third party payroll system and the payroll system exports a set of data that you then want to import into Dynamics rather than having somebody key it in, or if you want to use it for expense management. So often organizations will use a third party software such as Concur, and then they get an export of the spending out and then migrate it into Dynamics. Those are the two most common. Of course, there's a plethora of different reasons why you might want to migrate journals from Excel into Dynamics. And so you get to have one format. Now, if your two competing teams, your expense team and your payroll team want different formats, either you find one that works for both of them or you do a modification so that you have two different general journal loads that have each format for your respective teams. But here you can see that I can move things up and down. So for example, I said I want the currency to come afterwards, so I move it down. The nice thing is you see this little asterisk. It tells you currency is a required field, so you cannot remove this one, or you can, but you really shouldn't. Note that this is a requirement based on the entity structure. For example, date doesn't have an asterisk, but you need to have a date. Your journal won't post without it. However, it is not an entity required field. So while not perfect, the asterisk is a nice thing to see. And then finally above, you can see other fields that you may choose to add. So maybe for some reason, you're like, I really kind of want the document field. So I hit add, and you can see that it was added to the very end. Once your template is updated, you go ahead and press update. This refreshes, meaning it, all your data is lost, but that's okay because we didn't have any data. Now you'll see the publish button is grayed out. That's because every time you update the template, before you can use it again, you have to hit refresh. So now we're ready. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So I go over to my date, and you see this really nice thing here. There's a little bit of suggestions as to what kind of data you can put in. So when you say date, it pops up this little calendar for you. So I'll take today's date in the company. This can be turned into a global journal. If you know it's not going to be global, or if you're a non-multi-legal entity organization, you can, of course, choose to remove the company and the offset company columns because the system will automatically default in whichever company you were in when you open the template. But here, we'll put in USMF. And my account type, and again, it gives me a list of possible values, so I'll pick ledger. Because I pick ledger, this non-ledger account does not mean anything. So I'll go to main account, and I will pick my favorite GL code. Where did it go? Petty cash, there we are. Roosh, upload. Say we're going to debit $100 in currency, and again, you'll see all the currencies populate. Probably don't want to go through those, so I'm just going to pick USD. My offset company is USMF, and I'm just going to offset it to a ledger. Again, you can utilize this to do a customer load, for example, but again, this won't default in things like terms of payment and method of payment. My offset main account will be my bonds account, so I sold some bonds and put it into Petty Cash. Once I'm done, I hit publish, and you'll see my screen flicker a little bit, and now it's there, so this has been successfully uploaded. But don't take my word for it. Let's go in and look at my lines. And there's my journal entry that I just created. 
So you can choose to upload this. There's no limit on the number of records. So you don't have to worry about things freezing or timing out. It is usually pretty quick. So you don't have to worry too much about that as well. So phenomenal tool. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, hey, Arush, what if I wanted to put dimensions? Because you can clearly see here on my GL code, well, you can put dimensions on it. So I'll be like, you know what? That's a good point. So if you want to add dimensions, we have to go back into our designer and we have to add this account display value. This is something that if you are in the business of uploading or reporting GL level data to become very familiar with, because in Dynamics 365, your GL and dimensions are stored as a string. So let me add this in. And then I go ahead and I press update. It says I'm gonna lose any non-refreshed data, but that's fine because we've already refreshed this one. And I say done. I hit refresh. Ooh, and I think it went all the way to the end. Indeed it did. So let me quickly move that a little to the left. So up. There we go. All right, so one thing I do wanna call out before I show you an example is, now this is something you should do the minute you start implementing dynamics. So within your general ledger, we have this thing called financial dimension configuration for integrating applications. It's a bit of a mouthful. This says that anytime I'm doing any sort of integration, whether that's with Excel, with a data warehouse, with a third party system, and I need to send dimension data, what format is it gonna be in? And so you have these two types, you have default dimension and you have ledger dimension. Your default dimension is the dimension string that appears on your customer, on your vendor, on your fixed asset, your item. And so which dimensions are available in that string and in what order? So we have business unit, cost center, and department. And then in the ledger dimension, is the same thing, but just, there we go. It's the same thing, except this time you have GL code as well. So when you're looking at an item or a customer or a vendor, there is no GL code, that's subledger data. For ledger data, you have your main account as well. So you have your GL code followed by three dimensions. So if we look here, indeed we have our GL code followed by a room for three dimensions. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in a new line and I'm just gonna copy the data. But this time, instead of populating my main account, I'm going to populate my account display value. So you can see I put in 001 for the business unit and I left my cost center and department blank. Two, and everything else will just do the same. Now I'm ready, let's hit publish. And there we go. You can see the line number populated. So let's go back to our journal. My Irish demo. And you can see now I have my business unit as well. So if you ever need to migrate dimensions as well, you can choose to use this field. Now, one thing to note is that the changes I've made the minute I close out of here, my changes will be lost. So if you would like to save your changes, what you have to do is you have to save this exact Excel file onto your computer somewhere, and then re-upload the blank template into Dynamics and overwrite the existing one. And so this is where typically only a system administrator can do this, where the system administrator can decide what the format of the template will be. And this is where it comes in, where if your two teams want it to be different, then either you find a middle ground or you have a customization to build multiple templates. So the minute I close this, we are gonna lose this. So be careful of that because for example, if we do that, you'll no longer have your accounts with dimensions. You can of course choose to add in like dummy columns. So for example, if I didn't want this one, what I could have done is I could have said insert and then call this business unit and then say 001 and then say this is equals this, percent, this, blah, blah, blah. So you can use standard Excel functionality in here as well. But just remember, you have to save the template, otherwise you're not going to be able to use it again.
so that ends the upload from excel feature.